Oh, hi. Uh, I had promised to talk about how to do a good job of risk analysis. So I'm going to make um, a few videos that sort of condense and present in plain language each of the big ideas that I think are important um, to help you do a good job of risk analysis. The way I like to think about doing a good job of risk analysis is what outcome do you get if you're doing a good job? And if the outcome you get is better decisions. So if your risk analysis is helping you make better decisions, by definition, you're doing a good job of it. One thing you have to be careful of is outcome bias. And so if you make a decision about a risk and the bad thing happens or doesn't happen, that by itself, the outcome doesn't mean you did a good job analyzing the risk. Um, consider someone doing something very foolish, um, a dangerous stunt, and not getting hurt. That doesn't mean it was a good idea that they correctly analyzed the risk. It means they got lucky. Um, so we have to watch out for outcome bias and think about how to structure our analysis of the risk in a good way. And so the very first big idea is what is measurement? When, when we ask someone to um, provide an expert estimate of the likelihood of a bad thing happening, how much risk is there around a certain thing, um, we immediately have to figure out what are the units that we're going to use to measure. And I talked before about that being money. And what is that measurement? How do we make that measurement? One of the things that is very, very common for people to push back on when they're asked to provide an estimate about something where there's uncertainty is that's impossible. That's impossible. We can't measure that. There's no way of knowing. It might happen. It might not happen. There's um, a really big idea in this book from Doug Hubbard, How to Measure Anything. This is How to Measure Anything in Cybersecurity Risk. Uh, he's got an earlier book, just How to Measure Anything, but the big ideas are the same. And so the one of the big ideas in that book is measurement is reduction in uncertainty. And that is a very useful definition. So now instead of, say for example, you want to estimate um, how many laptops are you likely to have stolen from your company next year? That's impossible to know. How can you possibly know? But if you take the approach of reducing uncertainty around a range, all of a sudden you can come up with an interesting estimate. So my, while my company has 10 people and we have 10 laptops, well, we have one spare, so we have 11 laptops. And um, last year, uh, one laptop get, did, did, did get lost. So now... With that information, as an, as an expert um, on your business, you can suddenly discard some impossible values. You know 50 laptops aren't going to be stolen because you don't even have 50 laptops. And you can probably guess if one laptop got stolen or lost last year, maybe uh, zero is not a reasonable number. Maybe you still think zero is a reasonable number, but now you can narrow that range dramatically from its unknowable, and um, you have a really interesting estimate. So that's the big idea for today. Measurement is reduction in uncertainty. And a key technique in figuring out um, a measurement is to start with absurdly wide values. And based on what you know, or some key assumptions, you can reduce the amount of uncertainty, and you've got a measurement. 